so basically the world is ending and i just wanted to talk about britannia and the glee fandom because it's one of the very few things that um still bring me joy i'm I'm glad you're you're up for just just a little a little chat well first off who are you oh this is lk <laughs> and uh what have you been doing since like the all of this has been going down the quarantine well, I am still taking classes and teaching online, so that's been an adjustment. I'm not really an online learner, so I'm not loving the format, and I don't think my students are really loving it, but we're just trying to make it through. We have three more weeks, so then I'm supposed to work in New York for the summer, but who knows what's going to happen with that. <laughs> yeah, and you've been keeping sane? Um, not really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, <laughs> I started coloring today. I'm, like, desperate for things to do. I'm making wedding signs. I'm just, like, trying to use my creative muscles. I have found it very hard to write, which is not like me, but I haven't been able to, like, muster up the energy to do it. Yeah. You're one of, like, the most prolific writers in the fandom. So that really <laughs> says something. But, you know, I don't blame you because I get it. Um, yeah, like, I wake up and I'm, like, I'm going to write. And then it just, like, nothing comes to me. I know I had a couple requests that I write, like, a quarantine fix and I really thought about it and I'm just like I don't know what to say because like no one really understands what's going on in general yeah. so it's difficult to put that into words there there are ways to like write a quarantine fic and sort of play with it but at the same time it's like it's hard to want to make light of it and like I usually set my Britannia fix in New York uh -huh. and like with everything that's going on in New York I just feel like in some ways it could be a little insensitive to like the severity of the problem there as far as your work goes I've always felt it's very very much grounded in the real world yeah yeah so I try <laughs> yeah yeah for sure I always I always feel that from each of your stories like my stuff it seems very silly and like rom com -y. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, and that's what we love about it. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like me and you have always dabbled in two different sort of genres of fic, but we have the same process in a way. I saw that you had an ask from somebody who said that during all this quarantine stuff, they were kind of thinking of a specific universe um, of one of your stories that takes place in New York and... The person said, you know, I wonder if that's weird or insensitive. And, like, I don't think so because, like, these characters, like, they make homes in our hearts. Right. And I definitely don't think it's insensitive to be thinking about that because, yeah. like, this would be happening to them. And if you come to recognize these characters as, mm -hmm. like, real entities, then it just makes sense that you would, like, worry about what they were going through. And that story specifically, because they work in a New York hospital, mm -hmm. and, like, they they would be on the front lines of this. And I've thought about it a lot since I got that ask. I just can't figure out a yeah. way to put it into words. And, you know, maybe you'll be able to do that six months down the line. Like, after you, after we all sort of get through it, but, like, right now in the middle of it, it's just, like... And the good thing is, is that story is about a year behind real time. So mm -hmm. I have a lot of space where I could come back to this in a year when, like, if I reach that point in real time and, like, it'd be something once we're, like, kind of distanced from this. Mm -hmm. In the previous little little episode of this sort of weird makeshift little podcast I'm sort of throwing together at the wall, I asked um, Mayte, like, what do you think Britannia like Canon Britannia would be doing during quarantine. I think that Santana is going crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think that she really can't function that way of like not being able to leave the house, uh -huh. not being able to go to work. Like I think she's like a very like work driven person. And so to have to be here, I mean, I don't know what I think her job would be at this point in her life, but uh -huh. I think that she would be, like, further along in her career now that I, she probably would have finished college. She would be, like, doing something that she would probably be able to work from home, I would assume. Mm -hmm. But I think that she, as much as she says she doesn't like people, she, like, craves that social interaction of going out. I feel like she would um, really miss insulting people to their faces. Yeah. <laughs> to their faces. Yeah, and on the flip side, I feel like Brittany would be, like, the calm in the household. 
I think Brittany would be, like, very calm and, like, using this time to, like, do things she always wanted to do, but, like, mm. never had the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I'm not sick. I just have terrible allergies, which makes everyone think I have coronavirus every time I go to the grocery store. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. No, I feel you. I feel you. Um, <laughs> so I am now a department lead. I don't, I don't want to say the specific company name yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not supposed to but it's um a department lead of the e-commerce division of um, one of america's like biggest grocery chains so you are probably working like crazy yeah because online orders which is e-commerce it's um we're blowing up we're blowing up and so i'm an essential worker and i'm having a mental breakdown each each, and, each day or every other day it seems I mean, I, it's like, I think it's like two different types of mental breakdowns. Like the kind, like I'm having being stuck in the house all mm-hmm. day. And then like Jay is an essential worker too. So she's going out mm-hmm. the house every day. And yeah. I think that she's kind of experiencing what you're experiencing. Yeah. It's like, you know, the people who are staying at home, it's a different kind of stress than the people who are going out. But we're both, each kind of person is absolutely experiencing something yeah so. and i mean some days i feel like i'm jealous of her because she gets to leave the house but then i think like she's putting herself at risk mm-hmm. every day and mm-hmm. <laughs> like i don't know if i'd want to be in that position either but like when she leaves to work in the morning I'm like i just wish i could go outside i and i feel like you know what as far as Britanna is concerned i feel like <laughs> santana would not allow Brittany to be any kind of essential worker no, she, I agree. She would be like, you're not leaving the house. <laughs> no. I'm not losing no, you. You know she's super paranoid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, what I did is I found like a get to know your author meme. And it's from, it's like an ass game or whatever. And it's from Tumblr. So I figure instead of talking about the virus and all that, since you're an author, I could just sort of pick your brain. And I don't know, maybe your readers and your fans will like get a kick out of it. So, um, question. Is there a story you're holding off on writing for some reason? A new story or a story that I've been working on? Mm, a new story. A story you've yet to sort of put pen to paper. I have wanted to write the story for years and years, like since Glee was still on, where Santana was um, more like Gilmore's half-sister. So my hesitation is, you know, like... Lorelai's father is, like, such an upstanding guy on Gilmore Girls, mm-hmm. and the idea of him, like, cheating on his wife mm-hmm. with, because, like, in, like, my version of the story, like, Santana's mother would have been, like, a maid in their house, mm-hmm. and I'm just, like, I'm, like, I really want to write it, but I'm so hesitant to, like, do, like, an injustice to, like, the Gilmore Girls characters mm-hmm. in that, mm-hmm. in that way. I totally get where you're coming from because like I have my own giant crossover with Glee and Queer as Folk and yeah. it's like you want to do justice to both universes and I'm very like detail oriented so yeah I totally get you yeah so maybe someday I'll write it <laughs> okay so uh, another question for you what work of yours if any are you the most embarrassed about existing Ooh, that's a hard one <laughs> yeah i mean i look at some of my earlier writings uh-huh. and they're like they're not good <laughs> guys i don't know how you've all stuck around with me reading some of the stuff i've written like it's not good <laughs> like the story might be interesting but like the writing itself is not something i'm proud of uh-huh. hmm. like i just recently reread finding the way back Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm working on the third part of that universe and I kind of just wanted to go back to the beginning and like I'm embarrassed by how it's written like I'm really into the story Mm -hmm. and like I love it it'll always hold a special place in my heart but Mm -hmm. I wish I would have been a better writer when I was writing it but you know at the same time I feel like each story gets us to where we need to be as writers so in in that way it served its purpose but yeah yeah I totally get you um I like I said in the previous little episode or whatever it's called um i've been rereading you instead i'm like oh wow i hate this oh but it's so good it's cute it's okay i don't know so another question for you what order do you write in chronological do you go favorite scenes first so 
I wrote the end of the Finding Way Back trilogy, like the last chapter before I started the first one. That is not typically how I write, although I will say, um, Nick and I did a lot of writing together for a long time before our lives just got too crazy to continue that. Mm-hmm. And um, when we were doing that, we were writing way out of order. <laughs> it was just like whatever, like, struck both of our interests at one time, but like, we would just start writing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, there's so much that we wrote, and I think I had to um, erase my computer. Um, I had a virus a couple months ago, uh-huh. and I think that we actually lost probably like a million words worth uh, of writing that we did. <laughs> that would hurt me. That would hurt me so much. Yeah, because <laughs> I had it all saved in a file on my computer, and it is oh, not man. there anymore. <laughs> So, another question for you is, name a character you were most surprised to end up writing. Hmm. Um, I'm just trying to think over, like, what I've written and who I've written about. hmm I'm going to say probably Artie in, my like, Fire Island verse. Mm-hmm. Um, since, I mean, he's not a major character, but he does take up a lot more space than I would normally allow to Artie. I think Artie is, like, a big misogynist, and I'm not crazy about him. Mm-hmm. But he ended up, like, serving a purpose in that story, and I think he still serves a purpose. So mm-hmm. that that's surprising to me. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, as far as Artie being a misogynist or whatever, I think in Kevin and Jenna's podcast, like, even Kevin McHale has called out like Artie's behavior towards women. So yeah. that's it's very much something that people are noticing now. So yeah. Yeah, I think when the show came out, like there was it, the world was a lot less in tune with that mm-hmm. than they are now. And mm-hmm. I think I mean I think we've definitely progressed for the better. I think now looking back we can I mean, I saw Artie that way when the show was on, but I think as a society we can look at Artie in a different way now. Yeah. Oh yeah. totally, totally. Is there something you would go back and change in your writing that it's too complicated or too late to change now? No, I don't think so. I think I like where everything stands. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. When asked, are you embarrassed or enthusiastic to tell people that you write fanfic? So I don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, my life is very separate and I like to keep it separate. There are... Um, some things that have happened in the past few months that made me wish I kept things more separate than I have. Um, I think when I published my book, my, um, I put my real name out there where that was not something I ever wanted to do. Uh-huh. You know, it's fine. Everything's fine. We talk about fan fiction a lot in my graduate program, which is weird. Mm-hmm. And I obviously never mention that I write it, but I think that it's gained more acceptance. I think that like our age though we're at like kind of a point where it wasn't accepted so we don't talk about it i see younger people talk about it all the time yeah younger people are like getting freaking movie deals out of their fanfics yeah (laughs) um yeah so that's cool i i have a few friends real life friends who know but yeah i try to keep it on on the dl when it comes to more complicated narratives how do you keep track of outlines characters development timelines And, I mean, I feel like your stories, again, they're very much grounded in real life, and they have a lot of detail, and I would describe them as comprehensive. (laughs) You can just call them too long. (laughs) (laughs) No, but I think comprehensive is like a compliment. (laughs) Somebody once called one of my stories comprehensive, and I I was like, that's a compliment. I mean, I I really appreciate that, because sometimes I feel like I just ramble. For years <laughs> so I have a really good memory which is good because most of my like detail work is in my head I do go back and read when I'm like stuck on something I'll go back and like read parts because I can pretty much piece where the information is in the story so even if I just have to go back and read a few chapters um there have been mistakes that I've caught it is what it is nobody's mm. perfect you know but I do try to I do try to reread a lot I think that's like my best technique are there any um specific episodes or scenes that you sort of you go back to just to sort of get the vibe of a character even though you're writing them in an entirely different universe do you ever go back to like revisit like actual glee scenes of Britannia? i used to do it more than i do it now Mm -hmm. 
I was like on this kick where I was going to watch the whole show and I tried it twice and still haven't finished. So now I have to do it like a third time. <laughs> um, but I don't know if I'll ever actually finish. But like, I think sometimes just watching it, even like watching episodes that have nothing to do with Britannia, just sort of like fit you into like a headspace. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, sometimes I just like to watch season one where they were like just in the background and just be like, these little babies like yeah. they got to have a whole story and so many like there are so many talented writers in the Britannia fandom and they gave such life to these characters and I think like that's why I like to watch the episodes where they're not central because it just reminds me like mm-hmm. the work and like the like amazingness I guess of Britannia writers like I really enjoyed Britannia on the show but what made me fall like head over heels in love with them like as a ship it's the writers in the fandom. They just, yeah. they keyed into who, like, character DNA is what I like to call it. Like, who they are at the base. There's so many writers who just nailed it. Like, I don't think I could ever read fan fiction for another fandom. I mean, mostly because I don't really care as much as I care about Britannia, but mm-hmm. I don't think you'll ever find the wealth of talent somewhere else that you find in the Britannia fandom. Yeah, and I would even go so far as the Glee fandom. Like, Okay, so I've never read any like Glee fanfiction that's not Britannia, uh-huh. but I think, I mean, Glee was like a major cultural movement. Like, oh, oh, yeah. everybody was writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think you have that same cultural phenomenon with other shows that like everyone kind of just stopped what they were doing. Um, okay, so here's another question for you. Are there any subjects that make you uncomfortable to write? Yes, I will not write rape. It yeah. makes me uncomfortable to read. It makes me uncomfortable to write. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, like, I think that there's a certain way it has to be done. I mean, mm-hmm. my cousin was raped um, over a decade ago, but, like, I sat in that courtroom through the trial, mm-hmm. and it's, like, I just think, like, in, unless you're a survivor and have experienced that, like, mm-hmm. I don't, like, I don't want to indict anybody for what they do, but I don't think people that don't know have any business writing it. <laughs> like you said, there is a way to write it. It's, that is not something I am capable of. Um, like, like, I... What was that fic? There was that fic that was, it was never finished. Maybe you'll remember the name, but Santana was raped, and she, like, got hooked on drugs. It was written by a rape survivor, and it was like, that's the only rape fic I've ever read. <laughs> mm, I, I don't know. I don't know the title of that. Just because I read very much what I write is, like, and that's, like, comedy. If it's anything, like, intense or brutal, <laughs> I just, I, I click away. Like, I've been asked why Santana wasn't raped in my Annie verse, but she was like physically assaulted. And it's just like, I, I think there's a line between writing about physical assault and writing about sexual assault. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. This one's kind of fun. This, this question. Okay. Good. We need a light question. <laughs> Have you ever become an expert on something you previously knew nothing about in order to better a scene or a story? Not necessarily something you knew nothing about, but, I could probably, like, deliver a baby right now with the <laughs> amount of knowledge I have about, like, pregnancy and birth and delivery, like, just from writing. Yeah, that's cool. I feel like you've written a lot of, like, medical stuff or in yeah, your universes. I've learned a lot about medical stuff. <laughs> I have a story called uh, It Was Love to Me. And in it, Britannia sort of come across a drag queen psychic. She reads tarot cards, and then she also uh, reads Britney's poems later on. And, like, in order to, like, do those scenes justice, I went down, like, a YouTube rabbit hole and read so many articles about, like, how to actually read um, somebody's palm lines and, like, what each line means. And as far as tarot cards, like, what each card represents. And, like, yeah. I even considered going to like a card reader myself just to like get that experience that's so cool it's yeah i i I wish i i I went and did it and i know you let you do thorough research because i know like when i was still drinking and you don't drink and you were writing about like i guess it was what story was it you were asking me about a specific drink (laughs) um pink squirrel yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) that was for squirrel friends 
I saw that title of the drink, and I'm like, oh, I need Kurt and Santana to drink this. According to Santana, pink squirrels taste like unicorn ass. Uh, I see. wish I had done more. I I never really put a lot of emphasis on, like, actual wedding stuff when writing. I was always more focused on, like, you know, like, they're just getting married. And I've never written, like, a huge wedding for them. Like, I never really thought they were those kind of people. And now that I'm planning a wedding, I wish I would have spent time doing research on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, let's see. What is your favorite fanfic trope to read or write? You know, I don't know. I, I tend to not write soapy stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think about reading. I mean, I'm definitely a sucker for a good coffee shop at you. <laughs> really? Here's, okay, here's this, like a little tidbit about me. I don't like coffee shop AUs. I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, nothing ever happens. I know. And I just <laughs> love it. Like, I'm such a sucker for it. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, okay. What fanfic trope do you wish would go away? student teacher oh yeah i see a lot of that okay how many hours a day do you spend thinking about your ship i'm gonna say this though for a grown-ass woman i spend way too much time thinking about two cheerleaders in love yeah i would say the same thing now i've been so focused on reading old scrap school um but like when i'm like laying in bed at night i'm like just like thinking about like what's going to happen in each of my stories. And I think if my mind wasn't so preoccupied by everything else right now with being home all the time, I would think more about it. Okay, here's a fun one. Um, How much memorabilia do you own of your favorite fandom or ship? So I have the outfit that Santana wore Uh um, for the kiss in the 100th episode. I have the outfit that Brittany wore at the train station in the season three finale. Uh-huh. Um, I have new tags from Breadsticks that say Lee and Kelly that um, one of my friends actually sent me in a thing she got from auction. Uh, yeah. I did the auction a yeah. years ago. So tell me what else I have. I do have a lot of fan art that people have made for me that I, I have in a frame. Well, right now it's in my storage unit, but normally I keep it in my office. Cool, cool. Um, I really, really wish I had the money to get custom um, Funko Pops of Britannia because I want them so bad and they're so expensive. Right. Um, we, me, me and you have talked about this. I have looked into it myself and it's like $80 a pop and like I can afford it, but I'm like, that's stupid. <laughs> but I you- always say I'm going to buy them and I just, I can't justify it. And honestly, if I bought them right now, Jay would kill me because I'm not really working. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm still holding out the hope that we will get official Glee Funko Pops. I would buy everyone. I would buy Artie, Tina, Sue. I would. I probably. Oh, I would have the whole set. Absolutely. Yeah, I. I would even buy Blaine. I'm not a Blaine fan, but I would even buy him. No, I would just. They need to all be together. <laughs> would you buy Mr. Shu? I would have to buy Mr. Shu. <laughs> he, he would have to be part of the collection. I would <sighs> get a whole shelf, and it would just be like my Glee Funkos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, my prized possession, like right now, is like my official Drag Race Funkos. Oh my gosh! That's awesome. Okay, you don't have to answer this one if you don't want to. Um, smut or fluff? Fluff. I like a I like a nice mixture of both. Yeah, a nice mixture. Like I'm not like one to just read smut, but like if it's well written within the larger context of a story, uh-huh. like I enjoy it. Okay, here's another question. Do you have or would you consider getting a tattoo um, for your favorite ship or fandom? I have one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have I Makes You Bolder, Children Get Older, and Two Songbirds on uh-huh. my left forearm. <laughs> cool. So uh, that kind of leads to this next question, which is, wh- what is the strangest thing you've done to honor your fandom? Which, I mean, getting a tattoo, pretty up there. That's pretty up there. Um, I honestly think going to Britannicon, I never thought that would be something I would be into. But it was honestly one of the best experiences of my life. I met some of my best friends. I mean, the fact that, like, Britannia as a whole has, like, shaped who I am as a person. I mean, that's how I met Jay, you know? That's how mm-hmm. I met, like, Nick and, like, the, like my other friends. I mean, it's just, like, it's crazy that, like, just watching a show led to my whole life being the way it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, do you prefer AUs or Canon compliant? Like, 
to read and to write? I don't think I could pick. I love them both equally. <laughs> yeah. Although I am a huge sucker for historical AU, so. Um, how would you describe your style? I think my style would be, like, very emotional. Mm, yeah, I definitely feel that. I definitely feel Like, that. I spend a lot of time talking about emotions, and I write little paragraphs rather than a lot of dialogue. Like, I don't think my dialogue is that great. Like, I think you write the best dialogue. Uh, yeah, see, I, I feel like dialogue is, like, my strength, but, like, as far as, like, like, soothing prose and all that, I, I suck at that stuff. Yeah, that's what I feel like I'm better at. Yeah, <laughs> so I feel like, yeah. What's the weirdest AU you've ever come up with? I mean, probably leaving normal. It's, I mean, it's, the beginning is based on Roswell, but the actual meat of the story is not. Uh-huh. But it's super weird. <laughs> Is... And just while we're on that topic, for anybody listening, I am rewatching Roswell, so hopefully I will actually write more of Leaving Normal since it's been about 18 months since I've written anything. <laughs> oh, well. Um, let's see. Is there a fic you wish someone else would write or finish for you? See, that has me feeling a certain way because even though I want my fics to just sort of magically, like, finish themselves it would feel like some kind of betrayal if I found somebody just, like, took my fic and then just they started working on it themselves. That would sort of hurt me. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. I will say, I wrote that L fic last Christmas, and I waited years to write it because I was really hoping that somebody else was going to write it because I didn't <laughs> want to write it. I wanted to read it. Sometimes I have this great idea. I'm like, oh, I want to read that, but I don't want to write it. Okay, so are you what George R. R. Martin would call an architect or gardener? As in, how much do you plan in advance versus letting the story unfold as you go? I think I'm more of a gardener. Yeah? Yeah. Is there a secondary or underrated character you want to see more of in fic? Dave Karofsky. Mmm, yeah. I am a big fan of Karofsky. I feel like, like Santana, there's depth there to explore, but I don't think the show ever gave him the opportunity, like the actor or yeah. the character. Um, yeah, I agree. We should have seen more of how Dave and Santana's friendship worked. I, that would have been a way to humanize, like, both of them in season yeah, two. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I've read a couple of uh, fanfics where it's just sort of an exploration of their sort of budding friendship during that period. Yeah, like, I... Okay, a character you enjoy making suffer. Quinn for Bragg. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Unpopular opinion of the country. I actually tend not to write her, mm -hmm. but I, I usually write her pretty poorly when I write her. Like, I have a cough. And, and I gotta say Blaine, too. I mean... Yeah, I'm not a fan of Blaine myself. Although I do... Here's the thing. I really dislike Blaine a lot. However, I'm always sort of trying to challenge myself. And so I've had this idea of like, one day I want to write a story, like a sort of ensemble piece that's sort of fun and, and silly. And I want to use Blaine. I'm like, I want to make him funny. I don't think I've seen anybody write him be funny. Just to I see if I can. <laughs> Just to see if I can. It's like, can I trick myself into liking him? Um, a character you want to protect. Santana. I just want only good things to happen to her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh, this next question is going to hurt. Major character death. Do you ever read or write it? I have read two. Uh -huh. Against everyone's warning, I read color and was like devastated forever. <laughs> um, and then I read JJ's one shot about um, the end of the world, and that fucked me up for a long time. Oh, does it end with them in bed, and they're like, mm -hmm. "It hurts," but it's so yeah. beautiful. Oh it's my gosh. so beautiful, and I wouldn't have read it by anyone other than JJ. Yeah. Ugh. What song fits your pairing the most? That's a hard one. So I myself have like a whole playlist of songs that I mean, I... me too. That's why I can't pick one. Okay, so I have a whole playlist of songs that I feel like uh, uh, very much relate to Britannia, but the one that comes to mind has already been on Glee, and I fully believe it was given to the wrong ship. 
and that is Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. Really? See, I feel that way about a thousand years. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, my God. This reminds me, today I was at work, and I had my uh, Bluetooth earbuds in, and I was just listening to music, and um, have you ever heard Kesha's Praying? Yeah. Okay, so I was thinking, oh, my God, what if instead of Santana singing Alfie to her grandmother in the final season, she sang Praying? That would have been really good. It would have been so much better. I hate Alfie. (laughs) I know, for her last song. I know. That was just, that itself is like an injustice to me. Kesha's praying, if Santana sang that, it would have been so much more impactful and beautiful and epic. I agree. (laughs) I 100% agree. I'm like looking at my retirement playlist right now. (laughs) You know what she also should have sang? Christina Perry's Human. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so here's another question. Do you have a least favorite canon moment of them? Yes, the sex tape. So I'm now working on this third part of my Annie verse, mm-hmm. and each chapter is about a year after the previous chapter, so like their daughters are growing up, and I have this plan that I'm going to write their youngest daughter being really pissed, and they don't know why, and it's because she like found out about the sex tape, and like just like them dealing with that. Oh, wow. Ooh, that sounds so <laughs> like... I want to sink my, sink my teeth into that. Yeah. Yeah. I will let you know when that's up. Okay. <laughs> it could be a year from now. But <laughs> You know, there's some there's some people who are still hanging on in the Britannia fandom who, a year from now, they'll be there and they'll be reading it. Exactly. So, I mean, I've been writing that verse for seven years, eight years. <laughs> mm, wow. Okay. So, if you had to take them and plunk them into another fandom... What fandom would that be? Hmm. Probably Gilmore Girls. I would have to be Luke and Lorelai. Okay, which character of the pairing do you like more? Sorry, Brittany. I've got to say Santana. <laughs> same. Same. I think that's it. But So, thank you for answering that. Like I said at the beginning of this, Glee and Britanna is still one of the very few things that give me any kind of joy. And I just sort of the people who are still in the fandom, like, I I just want to talk to them, and I just want to, like, if the world is ending, I want to talk to the people in the fandom who have made it what it is. I don't know what this, I don't know, like, what this little project is, but I just wanted to do something. If you're in the Britannia fandom, like, come, like, talk to me. Like, I want to ask you questions. Even if you're not a writer, or um, somebody who makes art. I just want to like, what's your story with the Glee fandom? What's your story with Britanna? Tell me how you came to love them. So is there anything you actually just like want to say on this? <laughs> Since it's going to be like living on the internet for the rest of eternity. I just like, this is not even Britanna related. This is just like a general public service announcement. Be kind to each other. Be kind to people in the stores that you go into. I mean, people are just treating other people so meanly right now, and it's not right. Like, be nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I totally agree. Stay home. All right. Well, thank you again for this. Um, I Again, you are one of the most prolific writers, not just in the Britannia fandom. I feel like in the entire... <laughs> glee fandom so it's very very i have a lot of feelings (laughs) (laughs) yeah me too me too i have a lot of feelings too so i'm glad uh to talk to you and bye bye